bus and the uh, 61 Beetle. I wanted to make a video uh, just regarding, uh, you know, I'm pretty much just like a regular dude with a different job and wanted to restore a Beetle as a sort of do-it-yourself do and the bus here. And um, basically was doing all this stuff for the very first time. And so I wanted to make a video about kind of like just the mistakes that I made. And if you want to restore one of these just as a regular dude and you're not like a automotive shop or an engine building expert or anything like that, um, what you should do in terms of prep and just like painful mistakes that I made uh, in terms of uh, what to do. So I wanted to go through my top 25 list and I made a list here of what they are. Um, so um, the first mistake when I was doing this beetle here is you want to have you want to buy a vehicle that just has a clean title and where the back you don't have any issues with the notarized signature on the back. Um, what happened to me is I bought a vehicle which was the 65 uh, beetle here and on the back um, the guy gave me the title from the previous owner and you see this here reassignment of title he had the seller's signature from when he bought it which went back to the previous owner so that's like two two owners back but what it did not have is the notary it has to be a notarized signature here in North Carolina so I don't know what it is in your state it varies state to state but you can't transfer the title and so what that meant was when I bought the vehicle I actually bought the vehicle that the guy who was selling it to me technically didn't own because he never got the title transferred to him from the owner prior to that. So like I'm buying the vehicle from somebody who doesn't even own the vehicle. So when I got it and I tried to register it at the North Carolina DMV, I had to track down the guy who signed it and get him to do a notarized one. And that was like hit or miss. I had already done so much work on this vehicle that, um, it was possible that I would never own the vehicle because of the way that this uh, title transfer was done. So anyway, number one here, clean title, notarized signature. If you don't, if you buy a chassis with no title, um, you're just in for a world of hurt in trying to like figure out how to get it titled. And remember the title VIN, um, there's, uh, there's technically two VIN numbers on the vehicle, but what you really care about is the VIN right here. Uh, that's on the chassis tunnel, and that has to match. And now there is another VIN, and that VIN is inside. Let's see if I can do this. So what I did is I did have the VIN plate, and what I did is I... Um, I put the VIN plate on, and this is a 61 body, and I put the 65's VIN plate on there just to have that VIN plate. Now, whether or not that's legal, some I've read that like you can't transfer a VIN plate from one body to the next, but um, I just you know had the VIN plate. It matches the. Uh, to the tunnel's VIN, and so I put the VIN plate on the 61 body for the 65, matching the 65's chassis. Anyway, that's what I did. Don't know if that's legal or not. Um, but anyway, that's the first thing, clean title. Okay, the second thing is when I bought it, and I'll show a picture of this, the 65 had a super rusty body. So, you know, I had taken the body off, I put it on these body stands, and I just decided that I could not weld. There wasn't enough welding in the world to fix that body. So I took the body in a U-Haul to the metal recycling center or into the vehicle scrap center. They wanted the VIN number in order to be able to do it. They said they can't legally dispose of a vehicle unless they have the VIN number. Now, if I had given them the VIN number, then they mark it as crushed and destroyed and I can't use that VIN number. So in other words, I want to use the chassis. I don't want to use the body. I bring the body to the scrapyard. They want to ruin the VIN number so that it could never be used. So I could not give it to them and they said, sorry, we can't take the body. 
We took it to the metal recycling, same thing, no VIN, can't scrap it. So I was stuck with this like old maid of a body. So I brought it back here, actually right in here. And I went to Lowe's and I bought a whole bunch of uh, metal uh, re reciprocating saw <laughs> blades. And I cut that uh, 65 body into about eight different parts. And I brought uh, the smaller ones to the metal recycling convenience center. And I brought the, the two really big parts you know, I just cut the body and uh, um, and I they let me just dump it and because it was unrecognizable at that point. They let me dump it at the um, at the dump, um, and since it was metal, it's free to dump metal because they just recycle it. So anyway, that was a huge pain in the ass that I had to chop it up um, in order to get rid of the 65 body. And so I just wanted to say that if you're going to do a body swap and you want to save a chassis you might have trouble just dumping the metal of the body, the rusty body, if they want to take the VIN number and then uh, um, basically uh, destroy the VIN number uh, and, and that ruins your chance of using the chassis for your new vehicle. Because um, this 1961 body I bought for about a thousand bucks because it was really good, ru almost rust free and uh, then it fits perfectly on the 65 chassis um, as far as bolt holes and all that. So that's number two, body swap. All right. Number three, this was the most painful thing. And this was when I was doing the bus. Um, when I was doing, this is about engine building. When I was doing engine building, when you're assembling the rods, the rod bearing, needs to have absolutely no rub. So I had one rod bearing that as I spun it around, it would kind of catch, you know, it would get three quarters of the way around, catch, then I could push it and then it would get three quarters of the way around. The other three were perfect. And then I put that motor in to this bus and I um, ran it and it ran. And then after about five minutes, it burned out the rod bearing and that completely, I mean, this was a multi-thousand dollar mistake to, um, to just not have smooth rod bearings all the way around. So that is my advice number three as far as pain goes is if you're doing engine building, the rod bearings, um, and probably this goes for all the bearings, but there should be no rub, they should really glide nicely Otherwise you might be in for, you've completely reassembled it and you've got yourself thousands of dollars. So that is number three, rod bearing, no rub. Number four, engine building, cam alignment clearance and clearance. So the cam, in order to be correct, there's a sort of a vertical um, line on the cam and then there's three dots and you want the vertical line to line up with the one dot of the triangle. I'll show a picture of that. I had initially done that wrong, not realizing that there's an alignment. And then when I was clearancing, you know, mysteriously the, the thing never cleared correctly uh, when the rods would go because I didn't have the cam aligned correctly. Now, any engine builder knows that that's how you align a cam. But if you're like a brand new person building your first engine, you don't know that. And where are you gonna read that? Um, maybe it's in the book. Um, I think it's important if you're gonna do an engine build, this book is essential. Like I, you know, I, I use this book. You can see I'm marking all the, I, I, you have to be meticulous. So you go through, you mark everything that you do. And then this book is also good um, as far as just Volkswagen maintenance, but this one is essential for engine building because you can go through step by step on either a rebuild or a new engine build. So, um, and let's see, the fourth one, the fifth one, so I'm just gonna do five per video in terms of uh, the top 25, so this will be numbers one through five, but the fifth one on engine building is you want to use a new case. Um, when I first got this bus, it had a 1500 case. I took it out, I clearanced it using my Dremel, and um, I put it back together and uh, ran the first, the first one 
I just couldn't get the clearancing right. And so if you're going to try to clearance it yourself, you know, you have to clearance for the longer uh, stroke of a, of a, of a larger um, crankshaft. And there are all these places where it doesn't clear. Um, and so I did it and it was such a pain in the ass and then it was always slightly rubbing and then when I put it back and I had my my uh, rod bearing um, issue uh, that was my first engine and it failed um, I mean it would run but it clunked and the reason was because of the rod bearing failure but I didn't know that it wasn't because of the clearance not being good and it was hitting or something like that so it's like I just had a mysterious failure and I didn't know until I opened it up that it was the uh, uh, rod bearing and not just faulty clearancing of an old case but in any case the things like the the main bearings and all that you just want to get a brand new case and so I got a brand new um, what do you call it a AS41 I, or, or I've got a brand new magnesium case which is what's used in in this beetle and I got a brand new uh, aluminum case which is what's used on the 2332 and um, those were both just fabulous. And now the case prices have gone up. I think, I think it was like 1200 when I when I got them, but the case prices are like 1400 plus dollars, but it's totally worth it to get a new case just for peace of mind. A, that there aren't cracks in weird places. B, that, your, um, that all your bearings are not somehow um, needing to be uh, re-bored out and see that your, um, well, just that your clearance is good for say, I have an 84 and a 74 um, on, in terms of the, uh, the crankshafts and you need bearing clearance if you're gonna, use, depending on what size rods you're gonna use. Uh, sorry, you need rod clearance for, for all those things. Um, so anyway, that's uh, numbers one through five, which is clean title, um, if you're going to do a body swap, be careful of, of messing up your VIN and how you dispose of that metal. Um, engine build, uh, rod bearing, no rub, absolutely no rub. And then uh, cam alignment, make sure that your um, three dots match where the uh, straight uh, sort of groove is in the cam. And then number five is get a new case because clearancing is tough. So anyway, um, hopefully, uh, you know, if you guys want to start a new project like this and you're just a regular do-it-yourself kind of engineering guy who wants to do a VW build and not an auto mechanic with tons of experience, then maybe these tips can help you. So I'll do uh, the next uh, six through 10 um, um, things that I learned uh, in the next video. All right, talk to you guys soon. Whoa, 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 whoa.